Chapter 16 Hugh watched in horror as the earth was snatched out from under him. He wanted to close his eyes, but he knew he'd quickly get used to this. For a moment, he tried to imagine that he had sprouted wings and been given the gift of flight. The soft ground twenty feet below suddenly gave way as they flew past the edge of the clearing. Any comfort that might have been within Hugh's grasp was raced away as he looked in through the gap. The mountain walls on either side descended in a, in a rush towards the churning waters waiting at the base of the great drop. Windchaser took them to the tree bridge, holding Raymond in place. The skyback struggled to maintain his position. He lurched from side to side, rising and falling dramatically. Hugh felt dizzy. You're not going to pass out. You're not going to pass out, he chanted. "'Is you I'm worried about,' Windchaser said. Hugh did not have the strength to tell Skybax that he was talking to himself. Suddenly, it occurred to him that Skybax had this sense of humor as dark as his own. "'Just fly straight,' Hugh muttered. As Windchaser heard, he gave no indication. Instead, he began his sporadic descent, falling a few feet at a time, rocking sharply. The vines bit into Hugh's flesh, and he did his best to ignore the pain." A strong skybax can carry weight of man, Winchaser said. I'm not so strong. Hope you haven't been eating too much. Bleeding hilarious, Hugh groused, his stomach heaving as the skybax, at the skybax jerky movements. Just get down close enough so I can grab Raymond. Hugh glanced down at Raymond. The boy was unconscious. You can't lose him, you know that, don't you? Neither of us can bear to lose him. The skybacks did not reply. The tree wedge between the cliffsides slipped again. This time it dropped on its right flanks, where Raymond was nestled into the, bran the cradle of branches. The boy rolled over once, twice, then came to a stop. Hughes was breathing hard. This had to work. But what if it didn't? Don't think about that, he screamed to himself as the thunder resounded through the mountains and the clouds threatened to unleash another downpour. A little faster, why don't you? Hugh cried in fear and frustration with Winchester's slow descent. Suddenly, they dove to within a few feet of Raymond. Hugh cried out in fear and let, felt one of the branches loosening slightly. Slower! Slower! Hugh yelped. He reached out and could almost touch Raymond. He could see the gash on the boy's forehead. Raymond will be all right, Hugh kept telling himself. I can almost reach him, Hugh said. Just come down a little bit. The strong updraft of the mountain winds filled Winchester's wings. The skyback adjusted his position and dropped dramatically. Hugh felt a bone-like finger of w wood poke at his chest, and suddenly he was on top of Raymond. The skybacks wailed. Its effort to regain its balance made the situation worse. The heavy tree forming the bony skeleton of the makeshift bridge tilted from side to side and started to sag. Hugh reached out and flung his arms around Raymond, praying he had a firm enough grasp on his friend. The boy moaned slightly, his head drooping back. I've got him! I've got him! Go! 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 Hugh shouted. Windchaser tried to pull up and failed. Instead, they crashed into the tangle of branches. Hugh heard a sharp scraping. He looked to his left in time to see the shattered tree trunk lose its hold on the side of the mountain. Again, Hugh felt the world yanked from out from under him. They were falling! Raymond's shirt was caught in the branches. Hugh felt his friend being dragged from his arms. With Hugh's mind, an all-too-familiar voice screamed to him to let go of Raymond. He and the Skybacks would surely die if he didn't. Hugh held on tight. The Skybacks wailed as all three plunged towards the icy water below, dragged along with the remains of the fallen tree. The rest of the debris trapped in the network of branches was shaken loose. Bits of earth and stone flew towards the rapidly nearing waters. Winchester flapped his wings in desperation, but his efforts were wasted. Hugh managed to control his panic long enough to move his hand to Raymond's shirt and pull. A hole opened up in the material, widened, began to tear. He yanked again and tore through the seam. Raymond grunted as Hugh pulled him closer, hugging him tighter. The tear split through the remnants of Raymond's shirt, and it fell from his body. The branch still held the shirt, but Raymond was free. The tree spun away and slammed against the left flank of the gap. It continued to fall as Skybacks' branded efforts slowed their descent. Winchaser! Hugh cried. Get us out! The Skybacks attempted to regain its balance. Instead, the efforts dragged them to the opposite side of the crevice. 
you saw the wall approaching and feared that both he and Raymond would be crushed in the impact. Somehow, when Chaser pirouetted, allowing his own back to slam against the stone wall, they hit twice more before the skybacks managed to arrest their flight for the barest of instants. Wobbling a small distance, they sailed towards the opposite wall. You saw the stone wall approaching. He screamed, and the jarring impact ripped through him. Windchaser had extended his ten-foot-long legs, allowing them to take the impact's brunt. Hugh and Raymond stopped several yards short of colliding with the stone wall. Windchaser fell back, tried to fly, and struck the wall again with his feet. Hugh took every blow stoically, though his jaws chattered together, and a jarring pain shot through his entire body whenever they hit. His arm ached from clutching Raymond, but he did not let go as they fell again. They were close to the thirty yards from the choppy waters of the canal below, when Windchaser drove straight towards a small ledge on the cliff side. The skybox came in for a landing, but the moment its wing's weight was placed on the ledge, it collapsed as if it had been made of chalk. They plunged the rest of the way into the waters, and Windchaser managed to ride himself into a semi-controlled glide. Don't let Raymond go, Windchaser cried as he tried his best to slow them down. Yet they still slapped into the deep waters with terrible force. Only a few feet away were a pair of jutting rocks that might have crushed them. The icy waters of the canal swept over Hugh and Raymond. All three were carried forward. The skyback struggled to find footing and keep his chest high. Hugh managed to keep his and Raymond's heads above heads high against Windchaser's upper chest and above the water, but Hugh's torso was still strapped to the skybax's belly. Both he and Raymond might have drowned before a safe way to safety could be found. The waters carried them through a darkened tunnel. They were forced to twist sharply to the right. Suddenly, unexpected brilliance faced them. A white, churning wall of foam loomed. Hugh saw it first. Waterfall, he cried, and then they were heading right towards it. Chapter 17 Hugh closed his eyes. He held Raymond tight. The strong water currents were tugging at them with more and more force. Their speed seemed to double and then triple, as the roar of the waterfall became louder and louder. Suddenly there was an odd sensation, a sharp dip, and they were away from the freezing water, hanging in midair for a single fleeting instance. Hugh held his breath, waiting for a certain deadly drop. Any time now, he thought. Any time. Nothing happened. They were moving, yes, racing forward as if the current still held them, but they were not falling. Hugh opened his eyes and looked down. The waterfall was below him. The thunderous roar grew softer and softer. Below, he saw the waters branching off into several tributaries. Land was beneath him. Other mountains loomed just ahead. Flying? Hugh was so startled he nearly dropped his friend. Flying, Raymond said again, his voice dreamy. Yes, Hugh said, choking back tears. I'll be a bloody rotter if we're not. Looking up, Hugh saw Windchaser as though through Raymond's eyes. The sun was making an appearance. The skyback wings no longer seemed damaged, and said they seemed to glow the colors of twilight. Windchaser was not an object deserving of pity. Hugh saw now his majesty. It was a sight so grand even the most jaded heart would feel new again, and finally came to believe in miracles. You're flying, Hugh cried. The skybacks let out a squall of triumph. No, Hugh thought, not flying, sliding, gliding. The momentum from the waters must have given Windchaser the added lift he needed. Flying, when Hugh repeated with wonder. Suddenly a vine snapped. Hugh gasped as he felt another began to loosen. The harness Hugh had fastened with vines was coming apart. Down would be good, Hugh screamed. Down would be very good indeed. They whipped along a mountain pass. Suddenly they came into a full view of trees and lush green ga- grass. Windchaser drove downward. Hugh's stomach lurched. He hoped he wasn't going to be sick. Just a little longer. Just a little longer, he told himself. Raymond stirred. Hurts. I know, Hugh said. His arms ached with the weight of Raymond, but his full attention now went to calming his friends. We'll get help for you soon. Don't worry. Hugh became aware of the ground rising up. He drew a sharp breath, and when Chaser managed to slow his glide, they were barely moving now, and were just a few feet off the ground. Hugh set Raymond down as carefully as he could. When Chaser rose into the air once more, and then landed upright a few yards away, 
The skyback leaned forward so Hugh could touch his feet to the ground. Faith, he said, snaking out of the harness and racing to his injured friend. Behind them came a flapping of wings, then a squall. Hugh turned to see Windchaser rise into the air again. No words were necessary. The skybacks would go and quickly return for help. Windchaser took to the skies with a renewed heart. See all the trouble you've caused, Hugh asked as he knelt beside his friend. Raymond moaned. All right. Now, I suppose we're supposed to feel sorry for you, is that it? Bloomin' stupid git, Raymond managed to whisper. Don't talk about yourself that way, Hugh said. I won't stand for having my friends run down. Raymond managed to smile before the darkness claimed him once more. Late that evening, Hugh left the infirmary at Skybax's camp. Raymond had two broken legs along with some bad bumps and bruises, but he was going to be all right. Dinotopian healers had the situation well under control. Hugh recalled how Raymond had been brought back to camp. When Chaser heard to return with a score of skyboxes and the riders, they had brought a special skybox harness that was made to carry a wounded man or woman. They set it gently under Raymond, strapped him in, and flew him to safety. One of the skybox riders stayed long behind to lead Hugh back to camp on foot. Very little conversation passed between Hugh and the rider. Hugh found he was no longer concerned about what other people thought about him. All he cared about was that his friend would get better. At camp, Hugh told that Raymond's legs had been reset and fixed into braces. Raymond had slept through the entire process, courtesy of some strange-smelling herb the healers brought with them. Hugh visited Raymond, sitting at his bedside for close to an hour. Raymond spoke in his sleep. "'Teach me. You promised. Want to learn to say more. Soul has what body looks. You promised.' Hugh turned and left the infirmary. Another visitor waited outside. Windchaser. He's going to be fine, Hugh said. The skybacks looked around, wary of anyone who might be within earshot. No, Hugh said. Let me do the talking. Windchaser stared at him intently. It doesn't take a genius or something to figure out why you don't let people honor you. All you had to do was pull, put myself in your place and it all made sense. An agitated trilling came from the skybacks. You felt it because you weren't able to save that boy yourself. You didn't deserve to be honored. Well, that's not only stupid, it's selfish. Winchester took a step back. Mind you, I would have done the same thing. In my way, I think I did. After all, what exactly brought you to the training grounds? A strange noise came from the skybox. It sounded exactly like the horn Hugh had blown in a warning as he raced towards the high wires. Hugh opened his hands. He would have died if you hadn't gone for help. He also would have died if I hadn't brought you with my alarm. Tell others, Winchester said, braving discovery. No, you said. I'll leave that up to you, the skyback shuddered. I know. You don't want anyone to know you can speak our language. Why does that scare you? Winchester's wings beat anxiously. Are you worried everyone will treat you as though you're different? Well, too bloody bad. You are different. So am I. Could our your life get any worse than it is right now? Yes, Winchaser said. How? Could lose friends? Hugh laughed. There's nothing you could do to lose Raymond. And if you're saying you consider me a friend, then fine. I'll accept the honor. But it's turned around from what you were saying on the gap when you were making the harness. Afraid you? Yes, why? Turn Raymond against me. You need him... Two. Hugh shook his head. I was jealous, it's true. You also said you didn't like me much. Sorry. Don't be. I didn't like you either. When Chaser made a disquieting sound, an obvious cry of disapproval. You know what they say. If you ever come face to face with someone who's exactly like yourself, you probably hate him on sight. When Chaser nodded. Don't leave. When Chaser said distressed. No, I'm not going to run away. I'm going to face up to things for a change. How about you? Are you going to stick around, or is it the Sky Gallery Caves? Want to stay. Good, Hugh said, because quite honestly, I think it would break Raymond's heart if either of us ran off on him again. And you made some kind of promise to him, teaching him more of your language from what I could gather. Winchester thought for a moment, then added, I wonder what Le Griffon would have said about this. If 
That's one bloke I really wouldn't mind spending time with, you know? If he and I were in London together, we'd kick up quite a ruckus. Winchester regarded Hughes quizzically. Suddenly, the skybox shuddered and made a series of strange racking sounds. Here yeah, now, Hugh said. Are you laughing at me? Who else? Winchester said. What exactly is so funny? Lay Griffin, not bloke. Triceratops. Hugh's jaw gaped open. It took him several moments to compose himself. He's a dinosaur? Before Hugh could say anything else on the matter, Raymond's instructor suddenly appeared. The caro seemed intent on visiting the student in the infirmary. He looked at Hugh and Winchester and gave a slight bow. My thanks for saving Raymond's life, the caro said. Domo erogato. The teacher was about to turn away when Winchester crowded before him. The caro stroked Winchester's flanks as he might any other anxious mount. Do not worry. Breathe deep. Seek peace. Winchester shook violently, causing Hikaru to gracefully withdraw. The teacher looked at Hugh and asked, "'What's wrong?' "'I don't know,' Hugh said. "'Ask him.' Hikaru frowned. "'I have no time for games.' Winchester poked his massive head between the two humans and let out a sound that caused Hikaru to blanch. "'The Skybax just cursed at me in my own language,' Hikaru said, astounded, or that's what it sounded like.' He isn't always in the best of moods, I'll admit, Hugh said. How very odd, Hikaru said, turning his back on the skybox. Where were your people? Winchester asked. Hikaru turned slowly, this time with a slight flush of anger playing on his cheeks. Parlor tricks such as ventriloquism are amusing in their time and place, young man, but this is hardly... Listen... When Chaser cried in a voice no human could ever duplicate, Hikaru's eyes widened. He talks, Hugh said, in his way. Does he now? Hikaru asked, his tone changing to one of astonished interest. Hugh sounded alarm when Boy fell. Your other students should have come. They were off playing, laughing, making noise. I saw them. They never heard. Only I did. Hugh not bad. Dolphins right about him. Hikaru nodded somberly. Yes, I see now. I did not reason this out. My ancestors would be ashamed of how I allowed my emotions to overco overcome me. Hugh, please forgive me. The other students will be chastised. And at the next celebration... No, Hugh said. It's done and in the past. And if there's anything worth celebrating, it's what Winchester's doing. Talking. Hikaru nodded, staring at the great creature before him. Windchaser, I see many ways for you to help the people of Dinotopia. The question is, are you up for the challenge? Are you willing to try? You can do this, you encouraged the worried Skybax. Nodding, the Skybax performed yet another act of true bravery. I will. Epilogue. Several months passed. The strange herb of the island helped Raymond recover from his injuries with astonishing speed. He was now up and walking about with only a small amount of pain. The younger boy learned he had lost his father's pocket watch during the trials on the Forbidden Mountains. You don't need it, Hugh said. You never did. If you want to see something of your father, just look into the mirror. These words meant a great deal to Raymond. They also helped him make a very important decision. Raymond and Hugh traveled to Canyon City looking for their closest friend. They enjoyed a brief tour of the magnificent place. Carved out of the stone canyon walls, Canyon City overlooked the deep gorge and served as the center of skyback training. In fact, the city sat so high the residents had the pleasure of living among both clouds and rainbows. After seeing many of the breathtaking views the city had to offer, they were shown into the courtyard of a grand building. There, Winchaser stood between two delegations, one made up of humans and saurians, and the other made of skybaxes. Because Winchaser was the first skybax to understand human and saurian languages, he had been pointed at the honored task of acting as a translator and liaison. The conference ended, and Winchaser turned to greet his friend. Breathe deep. Seek peace. Raymond was about to speak when Hugh, glowing like a proud older brother, cut him off. Have you heard? Hugh asked. Raymond is going to become a healer. You honor your father's memory. 
He's also got quite a talent of his own, you said. Look what he did for the two of us. He, Windchaser nodded. Miss Skybax finally seemed at peace. And you? Raymond jumped in time, this time. So Lissa sent word to Leigh Griffon. He was going to study philosophy with a diplomat and perhaps write some words of wisdom of his own. Windchaser nodded approvingly. Hugh said, I spent my life worrying about the future. I've always seen it as bleak. Now I see it, see nothing before me but possibilities. Second chances? Yes, Hugh said. For the first time in his life, he saw the future as glorious and far-reaching as the grandest vistas of Canyon City, and it held as many unexplored possibilities. I don't know where I'll end up, or what I'll be doing, you said. Perhaps I'll become a diplomat like Le Griffon, or something else may come my way. That's not really important. It's the journey that matters, not the destination. There's more, Raymond said, placing his hands on Hugh's shoulder. Hugh smiled and nodded. So much more. Like friendship and love, which Dinotopian, Dinotopia possessed in abundance, the very qualities that made life's journeys worth taking. It doesn't matter where I am on this island, Hugh said. For the first time in my life, I'm home.